ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the great Miguel Nunez, my friend. What's up, Miguel? <laughs> I'm good. Lou you Nail, my favorite. Do I look at you? <laughs> Say it yes. again. Do I look at you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Lou Nail, Nail, my favorite person on the entire planet. And you know oh, this. Honey. I just talked to her last night. She was trying to get me to come over. I oh. Her, no, I, I was just too tired. I shot all day. I couldn't come. I, I'm, I'm glad sorry. you didn't come when you were tired because you, you don't need obviously me tired. <laughs> need all your energy. That's right. <laughs> hey, Miguel, I feel like you're the guy that, pe you know, still at this point in your career, and, you know, with people getting older and then the new people coming in, I feel like you're the guy that everybody knows your face and they know certain few characters that you've done, but I feel like everybody doesn't know, like, your story or even the depth of your resume. Uh -huh. So we're here to fix all that today, Ooh, okay? Lou Nail about to put it down. Let's tell mm -hmm. about it. <laughs> so tell me about where you were born. I know I have the notes, but let's let you talk. Okay, I was born in New York. I was born in Manhattan, New York. Uh, my mother was from Wilson, North Carolina, little bitty, the smallest little town you've ever seen in your life. And I was raised on a farm. My mother was raised there with her grandparents. My mother, who I just moved in with me now, I should come meet at some point. My mm -hmm. mother ran away from home at 16 years old. And she ran away from New York and she ended up meeting James Brown. And that's how she became the writer of his number one hit, It's a Man's World. My mother wrote that song. Right. People don't know that. Yeah. We did check the yeah. credits and your mother's name is right my there. My mother wrote that song. So, this is a man's world. So she had a kid and she was out there trying to do her thing. So every time she had a kid, my grandmother had a farm. So she had eight girls and one boy. So she wanted. So when my mom had me, as soon as we got three years old, she gave us to our grandmother in North Carolina. Next, son, she had uh, seven. I got seven brothers, one sister. Everybody one year apart, and then she gave them to us. So we all ended up in Wilson. So, I so it's eight of y'all. Yeah, so it's I eight grew of up us in Wilson, North Carolina, deep, 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 deep in the. Honey, country. I know. I just came back from family reunion, Tyler, Arkansas. The eight, the eight kid. Trust me. I exactly. Know, I know deep. South. And I just had a family reunion. I had two cousins sitting there arguing, and neither one of them had teeth. <laughs> We'll talk about that later. Yeah, exactly. They're so not anyway, in need of dental care. So I go, and, I, and anyway, so I'm, I, I end up in Wilson, North Carolina. And from the day I think I could speak, my mom said the first time she spanked me, she said, I said, told her, when I become a movie star, I'm not going to buy you nothing. Yeah, it says that you have known what you wanted to do since you were three years old. Yep. Since the day I was born, my uncle came home with a Cadillac and it had California license plates because he was a Cadillac dealer. Mm -hmm. And they said, I sat on, on the street just rubbing the license plate. All day long, all day long thinking this car was in California. It's where I'm going to live and I'm going to be on TV. It's like I absolutely nail. Do you believe that manifestation can actually, like at that age that you can manifest like your future? Because I have a, a, a repressed memory of some childhood stuff too that connects me to comedy. And I never even thought that that was true until I remembered that memory. I'm like, oh my God, I'm always yeah. into this. You're a product of what you um, manifest. Yeah, yeah. I, I do believe that. Because, I, I mean, I was raised in a church. I was a PK. My grandfather was a preacher. My oh, that figures. Yeah, and we live next door to the church we own. So, but I always believed that the power of life and death is in the tongue. But I was too young for any of that. But I am a, 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 a product of, of, um, of that principle in, in living. I didn't know any of that, what they say, you know, the power of life and death is in the tongue, what you say, yeah, you manifest. Yeah. I was too young for it. But through what I did every single day of my life, I told anybody who would listen, I'm going to, I guarantee you. How are you going to guarantee? And every single person told me this. It is impossible, Miguel. You're in North Carolina. You're in the country. You're poor, you're black, you're skinny, and you're ugly. That's what I heard from every single person. They might didn't go ugly, but they would say, you're poor, you're black, you're not. They was like, you make A's and B's in school. You, you, you can do anything. You Don't think about that. They're actors in New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, Atlanta. They got agents, managers, lawyers. They got in the union. How is it possible? Your little skinny black ass from Wilson, North Carolina, out here in the tobacco field, going to get ahead of them. And I told, I guarantee you, I swear to you, Linnell, I knew it. So this can be an inspirational interview about the power, power of positivity, too. And I think your attitude has something to do with your health. I heard you ain't had a cold, nothing. I have not years. had a cold, flu, 30. I have not been sick at all. I've been sick twice you. and that was with, in 30 years, and that was both with corona. 
And I did not even know I had it. I would have been sitting here just like this, didn't even know I had it. I don't get sick, but I do do something that would shock everybody on this. That would probably be the most shocking thing that, that I would tell anybody, but Arsenio knows about it because he knew about it. Um, Eddie Murphy used to say when I told him uh, uh, that my grandparents were trying to kill me, but kerosene, <laughs> kerosene. Oh no, Miguel. Kerosene, you put in a lamp. You take a teaspoon of kerosene, you're gonna booboo more than you ever booboo, you're gonna throw up at the same time. That's because anything in your body that is not supposed to be there will get the hell out. And that's why my grandmother would line well, how us. How often do you do that? I, I do it like maybe every six months. But when we grew up, my grandmother would do it every winter. We were lying at when it was kerosene and sugar time. She would take kerosene and oh, put a little yeah. sugar in it. Mm -hmm. And every time, and never got sick because we were too many people in the house because my mom had her. Remember I told you she had eight and we ate. So we all lived in the same house. Yeah. So it was too many. So we couldn't go to the doctor. And I promise you, I was watching um, Jeopardy years ago after I ran away from home and I was living in a first apartment in Hollywood. And I was on the floor, couch sleep. And they said, what is the number one body detoxifier on the planet for re re uh, for parasites, blah, 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 blah. And they got penicillin and all this shit. And at the end, the number one was ding, kerosene. That's amazing. 